don't know if you've been to the wood store lately, but uh, lumber prices are definitely going up. But you know what's worth more than those lumber prices? You. And you deserve customers who understand that too. It took you years to get to this point. You spent money on tools. You spent money on materials that you messed up and had to start all over with. The experience that comes with that is worth something. Why are you all putting up with Karens? You don't need their money. There are plenty of people out there that will recognize and appreciate what you do and pay you for what it's worth. And their money is a lot easier to earn than Karens. And we're gonna teach you how to find those people. We're Jenny and Davis. We fly through hurricanes for research and build furniture for fun. A while ago, we came up with a business plan to sell quality furniture, which brings people together. Follow along as we build our business empire. Empire? Yes, Jenny, big goals. Okay, we're starting an empire. Maybe one day it'll span beyond the garage. So about two and a half years ago, we knew these two ladies that owned a coffee shop and they were about to open a restaurant and they wanted us to build out the entire place. We're talking tables, chairs, bars, everything. And we were so excited because this was gonna be our first big job, our first restaurant build out. We put together a bid, we were looking at pictures. We were, I mean, we were pretty close to going out and buying materials for this thing. We were young, dumb, and excited, but we started to realize a few red flags popping up. They hardly ever texted us back when we asked them questions. They weren't signing paperwork for us for the bid. We had some friends who were gonna buy this coffee shop from these two ladies, and that was gonna provide the money to go into the restaurant they were building. We ended up finding out from these friends that the ladies with the coffee shop were embezzling money from the previous business and had a court date and everything. So we withdrew our bid and decided that that wasn't something we wanted to pursue. But had we not had these friends, we wouldn't have known and we could have gotten into bed with some pretty terrible people. So in this video, we want to keep you from making the same mistake we almost made and teach you how to pre-qualify your customers. Because there are plenty of people out there who are willing to pay you money and not give you a huge hassle. And we want to help you learn how to find them. Because you're worth it. You don't need to waste your time with the terrible customers. And we know that you guys have stories like this too. We get DMs all the time from people who are just taking a bath on some projects because the customer is angry, they don't wanna pay. So let us know down in the comments, give us your story. We wanna hear your good experiences and your bad experiences with customers. Let's make this comment section a resource for the newer girls and guys that are starting a business to know what to avoid and what to look for in a good customer. We're gonna find our favorite three stories from the comments and we're gonna send you a free copy of our favorite sales book. So if you didn't know, there are good and bad customers. Not all customers are created equal. A difficult customer can cost you time and money. And then in the end, it, you would have been better off not even taking that customer to begin with. So we wanna focus on helping you find the right customers for you. This is gonna make you more money, you'll have less heartache, and you're gonna be able to grow your business bigger faster. We're going to walk you through how we determine if a total stranger is going to be a good or bad customer. And we're going to teach you what questions to ask to figure that out for yourself. These are just our opinions. And yes, we know some of them are broad generalizations, but this is what we use as a guideline when a potential customer comes our way. about customers. These can either be good things about customers, bad things about customers, or we've got this little section right here in the middle that we call the danger zone. These are red flags that you'll see with certain customers. They're not like bad, but they're also not great. It's up to you to navigate the risk you're willing to take within the danger zone. That's why it's called the danger zone. So let's start with the good. Okay, the first trait of a good customer is somebody who spends money freely. We mean people who just buy things when they want them and don't necessarily worry about the price. In contrast to this, think of somebody who's always like bragging about how much money they saved when buying something, whether it's groceries, furniture, whatever. That's not necessarily the customer you want. You want the people who just 
buy what they're looking for and don't really ask about price, they're not too worried about money, they just spend it freely and get things they like. All right, the next trait of a good customer is somebody who's looking to buy a gift. When people are buying a gift, sometimes they're willing to spend even more money on other people than they would on themselves. So that's a really nice customer to find. And since it's for somebody else and not for them, they may not be so concerned with every single little detail of the build that it throws you off. So people that are looking to buy gifts, a lot of times are good customers. Okay, the next trait of a good customer is somebody who wants to support you. Because they love you. If you can find somebody that, yes, they want what you're building, they want a coffee table or a kitchen table, but they really want to support you, that's an awesome customer. Not everybody's gonna be this way, but if you happen to know somebody that likes what you do and they wanna support you as a business, even better. They know they can buy it cheaper at Ikea, but they want to be a part of your success journey in your business. And lastly, a really good trait in a customer is somebody who appreciates art. Because let's be honest, that's what you're making. You're building functional art. And if you can find people who appreciate that, usually they're not gonna try to nickel and dime you on every little aspect of the build, and they're not gonna micromanage the entire process because they understand that what you're doing is a process. It's art, and it's supposed to be creative and free. Well, not free in the monetary sense. You're not building this for free. <laughs> you can find somebody with all four of these attributes, home run customer. Absolutely take it. We just had one of these clients actually for a build that we did. He wanted a custom living room set and it was perfect because he wasn't too worried about the price. He just wanted something that would look really good and match his home. It was a gift for himself. He was celebrating the fact that he just got a brand new home and he wanted to fill it with something really, really nice. Honestly, he wanted to support us. He's a good friend. We work with him and he wanted to watch us grow. And if he was gonna spend money on furniture, he wanted to spend it with us. And he appreciated art. He even told us when he was giving us ideas of what he wanted, he'd say, you know, oh, I want it dark brown, but I trust you. He gave us a little bit of creative freedom and understood that what we were building was one of a kind and special, something that he couldn't just go out and buy at Ikea or Ashley. Okay, so these next attributes are what make up bad customers. If we see any of these traits in somebody who's looking for a job or asking us about things, we're gonna find a way to say no to the build. First bad trait, they know woodworking. We put this trait in the bad column because if somebody already knows everything about woodworking, they know exactly what you're doing, they know so much information that they can get super involved in little details. All of a sudden, instead of saying, I want a coffee table, they're saying, I want an eight and a half by four walnut solid coffee table with these exact legs, I want you to use this router bit. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of control to have over a project and they're gonna know exactly how much everything costs and they're gonna try to lowball you. So we're talking about the kind of people that grew up watching their dad woodwork or learned everything from their grandpa, grew up watching and build things in the shop. They know a lot about the process, but maybe don't have a shop of their own to build it in. But they want you to build the idea in their head. Every time we've listened to one of these people, it's been a nightmare. They're gonna be so controlling. And if the product comes out looking any different than what they expected in their head, or you do it differently than they themselves would have done it, all of a sudden you've got an upset and disappointed customer on your hands. This is a very hard payday to earn. So this guy over here, this client we just talked about who hit all four good things, they were like so excited and showing off the furniture in the whole office, which is amazing. It's like free marketing, right? But somebody who was in this category then came to us wanting to build something and we just had to say no. Cause I'm not gonna put in twice the energy of talking to this customer just to make half the money. So stay away from fellow woodworkers when you're trying to sell something. Okay, so the next bad trait is somebody who's always looking for a discount. It is the opposite of the person in this column who spends money freely. This person's first question is gonna be, can you build it cheaper? Or they're gonna come to you with a picture that has a price tag on it and says, can you beat this? Or I want a discount, friends and family discount, coworker discount, do you give discounts? Is there a coupon? They might even say, hey, I found this on Etsy. It's way too expensive. Can you build it cheaper? Those kind of people you wanna stay away from. Turn around and walk away. They ain't worth it. All right, next on the list of bad traits, does not communicate well. 
The people that you try to ask them questions or figure out what they want, they never get back to you. They won't read your text messages, they won't answer your phone calls, or maybe they just give you really vague answers and it's just not what you're looking for. If you ask them questions and they don't answer you or they give you like really contradictory answers or conflicting information, if they're a bad communicator, they're gonna be bad at paying the invoice. Run. We'd hate for you to waste your time on somebody who's just never gonna pay. Okay, last bad trait. Somebody who you just know is difficult to work with. You know who these people are. Let's say you have a coworker who just at work is really difficult to work with and maybe they come to you wanting you to build them something. Don't feel like you're obligated to build something for these people just because you work with them or maybe they're you know friends with you at your job or whatever. If they're difficult to work with in general, that's not gonna disappear when you start talking about the coffee table that they want. Find a reason to say no. There, I'm giving you permission. Here's your permission to say no to that person that you don't wanna build for. Okay, now we're getting into the danger zone. These are just like red flags for you. It doesn't mean they're an automatic no customer, but it also doesn't mean they're an automatic yes. These are just things to be aware of and kind of be a little uh, wary of before you say yes or no. So the first one is somebody who's obsessive over little details. These are the people that are like asking a million questions. How pointy are the corners gonna be? Are they gonna be super pointy? Are they gonna be kind of rounded over somewhere in the middle? How thick are the legs gonna be? Two and a quarter or exactly two and a half? These are the people that are gonna be kind of difficult to please. You can work with them if you talk out all the details, but just know it's not gonna be as easy as the customer here in this good column. It's kind of the same reason that we don't sell to other woodworkers. Not because they know woodworking. Some people are just so detail oriented that they're very hard to please. And you're not gonna be able to cover every single little last detail of a project, or you're never even gonna get around to building it. So you have to make sure that the customer's expectations are set with a little bit of wiggle room. And a lot of times, these people don't like wiggle room. We usually get dimensions from people like, hey, how long do you want this coffee table? How wide? But if they start getting way off into the weeds with little details, that throws up a red flag for us. Maybe charge these ones a little more if you go through the process because it takes a lot of time to nail something down with them. Next in the danger zone is somebody who has said, I can't find anybody else to do the job. Which means other people, whether it be contractors, makers, woodworkers, whoever, have said no to these people. Not necessarily for bad reasons. Maybe that contractor just doesn't do what they want built. Maybe that's not their focus. But also, it could have been because the customer was difficult, they were too involved in the details, or they didn't get back to the other person quick enough. So again, not good or bad, just a red flag. If somebody said, hey, I talked to this contractor, they turned me down. I talked to two woodworkers, they turned me down. Kind of figure out why they turned the person down. We ran into this with one of the very first projects we ever built and put on YouTube. It was a lady that wanted a custom display box built and she was talking to other contractors about building it. A lot of times contractors aren't gonna do a one-off custom piece, which is why they said no. So we're like, eh, red flag, other people have said no to her before, but she had enough things on the good column. She wasn't worried about the price. It was gonna be a gift for somebody and she wanted it to be a piece of art. So we're like, okay, there's enough goods to counteract the one danger zone area in like her being a customer. So we did it and it worked out really well. But don't give us too much credit. We didn't know anything about this yet. We just lucked into it. Still a good example though. All right, and the third thing is contradictory information. These are the things that make you go, what did you mean by that? So for example, if somebody says, I want a kitchen table that looks all natural and then later tells you that they want to paint the top, that's kind of contradictory. Do you want it all natural wood or do you want it painted? Or people who say, I don't want it to look very farmhouse, but I want it to have big chunky X-shaped legs and I want to use some chalk paint on the top and to distress it so it looks rustic. Okay, you say you don't want farmhouse, but all the design aspects you're telling me are very much so farmhouse. So beware of people like this because they're kind of hard to please. They say they want one thing, but they actually don't want it. You just have to spend a little bit of time unpacking what they mean. Don't worry, we're gonna go over that in just a minute. And lastly, people who don't know what they want or who are indecisive. A lot of times they'll ghost you. You'll send them a text or an email and say, hey, what are you looking for in this build? And they'll never get back to you or give you a solidified answer. Again, not a bad thing. They might just need a little bit of help or coaching, but it's just a red flag. You've got to balance it with the good and the bad traits. 
All right, so all this information is great, but how in the world do you know whether these people that you've never met before are gonna go in any of these columns? We got a couple different questions that we ask almost anybody that comes our way so we can start to figure out what column to put them in. And the first question we normally ask is, hey, why are you coming to us? And then we just stop talking. We let them finish the sentence. Good answers to that are something like, oh, we just want to support you. We really like your style or we want high quality furniture and we know you guys build it. That's an awesome answer to that question. Some bad answers to that question. Oh, well, I was going to build it myself, but I just don't have the time to do that. Um, my buddy's got all the tools and we had plans to build this and we just, I, it's not going to get done. So we'd like you to do it. Hey, I found this thing at Ashley, but they're charging through the nose for it. I know you guys build it better. Could you match their price? Things like this are kind of like, you know, red flag to bad territory. So just by asking that first question, why are you going with me? Why did you come to me in a nice, helpful way is going to give you a lot of intel on whether or not they're going to be a good or bad customer for you. So the next question we usually ask is, okay, what exactly do you want? You know, yeah, you talked about a kitchen table, but like what kind of kitchen table? Be specific. And we stop talking. From there, there's a couple different responses. Good responses are like, oh, I want a kitchen table that doesn't wobble when we eat dinner. Or I want a coffee table that matches this end table right here that I've already bought or my couch. Those are good answers to that question. Some bad answers to that question would be more like, I want hand carved dovetails on this office desk so I can drink my coffee and I don't know, do other pompous things. Like, <laughs> I don't know what else to say, but like there's stuff like that. Like people that get like really technically detailed about what exactly it is they want. If somebody knows what a hand carved dovetail is, they're that right there. We're automatically going to find a way out of it. I'm sorry, I just don't want to deal with that kind of customer. Another bad response to that question is if somebody pulls their phone out and says, hey, I found this thing on Ikea, can you build it? Again, that's kind of a red flag because they've already got in their head the price that Ikea has for that piece of furniture. So if they come to you with a coffee table that Ikea is charging $300 on and your price is $3,000, really think you're gonna pull that off? It's gonna be much tougher to sell that item to them at a profitable rate. And the last thing here is one of the hardest techniques to build. I mean, it takes a lot of interpersonal like experience to pull this off, but you have to make sure that what they say and what they mean are the same thing. Or you have to figure out what they mean, even if what they say aren't the right words. Uh, let me give you an example. This guy that bought the nice living room set from us, he told us that he wanted charcoal gray legs on all of the furniture. And we asked a couple follow-up questions and we learned he didn't actually want like charcoal gray. We weren't gonna have to go buy a certain paint color. He just wanted matte black, but he didn't know the words to say to describe matte black. So we just asked for a little bit more detail and we realized, oh, he means matte black. But if we had just taken his words at face value, we would have bought a paint color that he did not want on his furniture. So again, you gotta be, you gotta like listen for things like that and ensure that what they say and what they mean are the same thing. And don't go overboard here. Do not start educating people about woodworking. If they get something wrong, just figure out what they mean and go forward with that because they're not woodworkers. If you educated them and taught them woodworking, what do they need you for? So just be a little bit patient and educate just as much as necessary to close the deal and move forward. So this whole procedure of determining good customers and bad customers in the sales world is called pre-qualifying your customers. And it really just helps set you up for success because a $500 sale to an easy customer is a lot more profitable than a $500 sale to a difficult customer. This one's gonna charge you way more time, effort, and energy versus the good customer. So if you can pre-qualify your customers, you automatically have a list of yeses and nos for what you'll do. And it's so much easier for you to run your business because then you can focus on building and delivering to the good customers because 80% of your time is wasted with the knuckleheads that aren't gonna pay you anyway. If you want in-depth coaching, if this is the kind of thing that like gets you excited and if you wanna get out there and start selling now that you've watched this video, we'd really encourage you to join the Stud Stack. It's a private Facebook group that we coordinate where other maker business owners can just learn and collaborate from each other. And it's people that are actually invested in running their business. It's not just a bunch of armchair quarterbacks down in the comment section of a YouTube video. It's people that are actually putting money on the line to make sure that their business is gonna succeed. So if you want that level of commitment, if you want somebody to hold you accountable to your goals, jump in the stud stack. It's not for everybody. It's not a bunch of lazy people, you know, 
thinking about starting a business. It's people that are putting their money where their mouth is and doing it for real. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, links in the description, studstack.net. So if this kind of video was super helpful for you, we'd really appreciate a thumbs up and subscribe. Follow along as we start our second woodworking business down here in the Houston area this time. It's been a blast so far. We'd love to have you along for the ride. What red flags, what what indicators do you use to pre-qualify your customers? What questions do you ask to find out all this information? We really wanna hear your stories, your, your experiences, and we can help as many people out as we possibly can. So have a good week and we'll catch you on the next one. Ask me how I do it, I just stick to the plan. Stick